we are studying about the autotrophs and we find out the importance of chlorophyll in photosynthesis. Now we may discuss about the other material required for photosynthesis. As you know, uh, carbon dioxide, water and the sunlight is the other requirement. Even though the plant need some other mineral for maintaining their life activities like the protein synthesis and the other things. The main thing which is needed for the carbon fixation for the primary developmental condition is carbon dioxide, water and sunlight also. So like all, you may also know that the roots while it absorb the water, the minerals also reach to the plant which may be utilized for protein synthesis and other uh, process. Then how carbon dioxide are received by these plants? In ninth standard, we may have studied about the uh, functions of stomata or it is about the gas exchange. Then what is the other function of the stomata? stomata uh, through the stomata transpiration occur, you know, at the plant absorb the uh, water through the uh, roots. It may move through the xylem and reach to the uh, leaf region. And uh, in substomatal region, the water reaches when it get abundance there. It may be translated through the stomatal pores. The stomatal pore is made up of guard cells. You may have studied it about it in the ninth standard. We may just uh, refresh that based on this short video. Observe that video and recollect the things about that. Process of stomatal transpiration. Most of the transpiration takes place through stomata. Stomata are microscopic parts consisting of two kidney-shaped guard cells. In stomatal transpiration, water vapor moves through the stomata of leaf. Water absorbed by the roots rises through the stem and reaches the tissues of the leaves through veins. A large number of spongy mesophyll cells in the leaf have their surfaces exposed to the intercellular spaces. The surfaces of the cells give out some of the water which forms a thin film. The water from this film evaporates and the water vapor formed saturates in the intercellular spaces. This vapor then diffuses into the other connecting intercellular spaces and finally reaches substomatal space from where it escapes out through the stomata. Mechanism of opening and closing of stomata Transpiration occurs as long as the stomata are open. It stops when they are closed. Open and closed stomata Closed stomata, flaccid guard cell, stoma closed, stoma open, turgid guard cell, thick cell wall, thin cell wall. The opening and closing of stomata depend upon the turgid or flaccid state of guard cells. When the guard cells are in the flaccid state, stomatal aperture closes. During daytime, as a result of photosynthesis, as the guard cells have chloroplast, concentration of carbohydrates rises, leading to osmotic uptake of water by the guard cells to swell. 
since the wall of guard cells towards stomatal opening is thick, while outer convex wall is thin, inflow of water in the guard cells causes them to bulge outwards, thus widening the stomatal opening. When the osmotic pressure of the guard cells becomes lower during night, the water leaves these cells due to exosmosis and moves to the neighboring epidermal cells having cell sap of higher concentration. The guard cells become flaccid and shrink and the stomatal aperture closes. As you understand from this video, the movement of water related with the opening and the closing of stomata. How the stomata open or close? When the water reaches to the substomatal region, uh, the water enter into the guard cells. When the guard cells become turgid with the water, so that the uh, stomatal opening become enlarged or stomata opens, so, the water become transpirated through the stomatal pore. Simultaneously, the carbon dioxide also enter into uh, the plant, okay, through the leaf. Actually, abundance of gas chain takes place through the uh, stomatal pores and it also support the photosynthesis. What is the need of carbon dioxide or how we could uh, assume that carbon dioxide is a, an essential one for photosynthesis that we may done with the help of a uh, short experiment. The next activity you just observe that activity also. Requirements, two potted plants of same size, glass plate, bell shaped jar, watch glass, Beaker, Petri dish, Burner, Forceps, Dropper, Potassium Hydroxide Solution, Ethyl Alcohol, Adin Solution, Water. Procedure Take two healthy plants A and B, which are nearly the same size. Keep them in dark room for three days. Now place each plant on separate glass plates. Place a watch glass containing potassium hydroxide by the side of a plant A. Potassium hydroxide is used to absorb the carbon dioxide. Cover both the plants with separate bell jars. Use Vaseline to seal bottom of the jars to the glass plate so that this setup is airtight. Keep the plants in sunlight for about 2 hours. Pluck a leaf from each plant. Put the leaves in separate beakers containing ethyl alcohol. Now place the beakers in boiling water and heat them indirectly. Alcohol will decolorize the leaves by dissolving the chlorophyll present in them. Now wash the leaves with the water and place in separate petri dish. Test with the iodine A and B leaves. Check the leaves for the presence of starch by iodine test. Do both the leaves show the presence of the same amount of starch? Observation The leaf from A remains unchanged in the presence of iodine. Thus, starch is not present in it. The leaf from pot B turns bluish in the presence of iodine. Thus, starch is present in it. What can you conclude from this activity. Potassium hydroxide placed near the pod A absorb all the carbon dioxide. Hence, plant A 
cannot perform photosynthesis. Plant B does normal photosynthesis by utilizing carbon dioxide from the surrounding air. The leaf from pot B therefore shows the presence of stars. Thus, this experiment proves that carbon dioxide is necessary for production of food, that is, for photosynthesis. Actually, large quantity of water flows through this tomato through transpiration. And uh, when we think about the desert plants, as there is uh, what the temperature is too high or sunlight is continuously placing to the plants, there is a chance of loss of more water. You may have studied about the adaptation of uh, these uh, desert plants. Anyway, some desert plants uh, overcome this by some other mechanism. That is, they uh, use the stomata or uh, the gas exchange mainly takes place uh, during night time so that the uh, this presence of sunlight may not be there and uh, they store this uh, carbon dioxide and this carbon is formed into another form and uh, daytime during daytime they may utilize it for photosynthesis so that uh, the excess loss of water may be avoided so normally plants uh, close their stomatal opening if uh, the gas exchange is not needed in order to avoid the loss of water. Have you heard about the hydrophytes? Hydrophytes are the plants which uh, grow in water. Some plants uh, you may observe in the video. Stomata are absent in the submerged hydrophytes, that is, hydrilla, valisneria. Uh, like uh, hydrilla, valisneria, etc. They are found to be grown in water. So that in this tomato is found to be absent in these plants. Tomato is totally absent in uh, hydrophytes. So because uh, uh, the, uh, they are growing in water. First we studied the importance of chlorophyll and uh, find an activity, an experiment to prove that chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis. Now, we studied the importance of carbon dioxide and we did another activity for proving that also. By these two experiments, some common things are there. So that uh, from these two experiments, we may find another experiment or we may do another activity uh, for proving the importance of sunlight for photosynthesis. Observe this activity and experiment so that we could find out how we could prove the importance of sunlight in photosynthesis. To show that sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis. Materials required Healthy potted plant watch glass, test tube, two beakers with water, iodine solution, alcohol, black papers, Bunsen burner, forceps, tripod stand with wire gauge and dropper process take a healthy potted plant and keep it in dark room for 24 hours after 24 hours cover one of its leaves on the upper and lower sides with black paper pieces. Put the plant in sunlight for 3 to 4 hours. After 3 to 4 hours, 
pluck this leaf and remove black paper pieces from it. Now boil this leaf in water to kill it. After boiling in water, again boil it in alcohol. Then wash the leaf in cold water and place it in a watch glass. Now pour some drops of iodine solution over it. Observation The leaf which has been exposed to sunlight will turn blue. There is no change of color in the remaining part. As we discussed earlier, in addition to this carbon dioxide water and uh, the sunlight, chlorophyll etc. Some other material also needed for the plants for maintaining their life activities. That means for growth and uh, other things. And that may be the uh, some minerals like uh, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium etc. And uh, normally they absorb it uh, through the roots. That is, uh, this material may be dissolved in the soil. The ma uh, major one among these are nitrogen. When you studied about the importance of nitrogen also, it is a major element for the uh, production of protein and in cell even uh, the formation of uh, other material, the nitrogen is essential. Some nitrogen fixing microbes, bacteria are present in the soil which uh, may support these plants for absorbing uh, this nitrogen from the soil. They convert the, uh, this nitrogen to absorbable form, fix it in the soil so that uh, uh, through the water dissolved condition, um, these plants may get this nitrogen and it may be utilized for uh, the other activities. So, the plant uh, prepare their food material and the uh, additional material uh, after utilizing for the sustaining of life activities, they may store it in their body. And uh, we studied that uh, the other organism, that is, uh, autotrophs prepare their own food material. But other organism depend directly or indirectly on these autotrophs for uh, their food. Okay. Now we may discuss about the uh, different types of heterotrophs. So you may observe the uh, small pieces of videos and uh, try to find out what mode of nutrition they normally uh, use for their sustaining. I will explain about each uh, after observing this video.